Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video and today I will show you how to play Ari. And this is going to be a very important video because you have to play Ari in a way that no other champion works except Ari. You might not understand what I'm talking about now, but you'll see during the gameplay part of the video. So in the beginning part of the video, I'm going to be explaining to you how to build Ari. If you don't care about how to build Ari and just want to go to the gameplay, timestamps in the description. So quickly before proceeding this video, I want to say that if this video reaches 1000 likes in the first day, I will make a Z video too. Okay? I will make a Z video. And also, follow me on Instagram, guys. As you can see, Hell's Devil with a lower lowercase. I will be posting some more... Um, some more personal things there. I will also be posting some behind the scenes things. You know, maybe a kitchen tour, maybe how I Photoshop my thumbnails, maybe how I edit my videos. If you're interested in all that, make sure to follow me on Instagram, guys. Okay, let's talk about how to build Ari. So I tried many builds and um, this is the best build that I can tell you. So you start with a Ludus Echo and you are supposed to be able to get this item before the first dragon. It's It costs 3000 gold and it is definitely manageable to get this as as you know before the first dragon so if you just don't die in your lane and farm effectively you should be able to get a ludens echo like 20 seconds before the dragon is spawning so then immediately you have to backport and and get it but i'm gonna explain to you later that it's not good to get zero kills before the first dragon with ari more on that later during the gameplay part okay after your ludens echo you want to build tier one boots if you want lower cooldowns, like if you feel like it's really important to get lower cooldowns, get Ionian Boots of Lucidity. But keep in mind, if you get these, it's going to delay your Infinity Orb by a little bit. However, I would say it's definitely worth it to get the Ionian Boots of Lucidity right after this item. Or maybe like, um, you know what you should do? Get the Oblivion Orb, because this one gives flat magic penetration. And flat magic penetration is amazing early game, and it becomes worse and worse and worse late game. Keep that in mind. So get the Oblivion Orb before getting the Ioni Boots. Um, I, yeah, that is, that is pretty much the most effective way to do it. Okay, so after you get these two items, you are very strong, right? These are two core items for Ari. And after these two items... Um, I would actually say that in 100%, yeah, I think 100% of the games you go for Rabadon's Death Gap. I have tried to go for the Green Book, but Ari is a is kind of a burst champion, and you're often going to be hard, like damaging the enemy's heart with it, right? But Green Book can be good. It can be good if the enemy, of course, has a lot of healing. If they have, if they really have a lot of healing, and if they're tanky get the green book if they have a lot of healing and they're squishy i don't recommend you to get the green book because with the rabbinon's death cap you're going to be able to one shot them so if you're snowballing with ari just get a rabbinon's death cap now let me explain to you if you're behind with ari now it's a different story like if you're losing with ari and the enemy has a lot of healing you can choose to get the green book because of course you're not going to be able to one shot them because you're losing i don't recommend you to get a void staff third item it's just not worth it so you either get the green book or you get rabbinon's death cap and you often want to get Rabadon's death cap, as I just explained. As your fourth item, does the enemy have a lot of magic resist? Get a Void Staff. If they only have a little bit, get the Green Book. Because Ari already deals true damage with their first ability. So, you know, you are going to be fine against tanks. But, of course, if they have a lot of magic resist, just build a Void Staff as your fourth item. So, if they don't have a lot of magic resist, build the Green Book. And then as your last item, build the Void Staff. You always want to build a Void Staff. Always. It's always going to be worth it to get a Void Staff as your last item. Um, about the enchantments, um, I, I I actually always go for Protobelt. Really, there is no exception. Except, well, okay, there is an exception. If the enemy has Z, it could be good to go Stasis Enchant. You know, if the Z is hard focusing you, Stasis Enchant is going to be nice. Otherwise, just go for Ionia Pro, uh, go for Protobelt. It's an amazing boot enchant on Ari. You can get this earlier on in the game if you feel like you can really utilize it by diving into the enemy and using your charm. Um, but I really like to get it after my third item or so. You know, I around my third item, I like to get Protobelt. Okay, runes. Always electrocute. There is no other rune that you should go for an Ari. Electrocute. Because Ari is a burst champion. So as my second rune, I I use champion. And um, it's hard to play with champion, right? Because you can't die in the early game. If you die in the early game, you're going to lose the champion. But during the gameplay part, I'm going to show you uh, why you should build champion. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not confident on your Ari, build, just go brutal, right? But if you really want to become a super good Ari, build champion. 
this is this is the best rune for Ari, okay? So keep in mind, if you're just starting with Ari, build Brutal. If you, you know, if you've already played Ari a few times and really want to get to that next level, then make sure you watch the gameplay part of this video and use Champion Rune. As my third rune, I use Regeneration, just for the energy. Because, um, you know, you already regenerate health. Because that's Ari passive. Every I think it's every third or fourth ability regenerates health for you. So regenerating energy automatically means that you have more sustain. So this one is really, really nice on Ari. Just, just use the regeneration rune. As my fourth rune, I run Hunter Genius for the cooldown reduction. Because um, the items that you're building don't really provide you with any cooldown. Well, only, only 10 cooldown reduction. As you can see, the rest, you know, it doesn't provide you with any cooldown reduction. So this 10 ability haste and then the Ionia Boots of Lucidity plus Hunter Genius is going to put your ultimate on a super low cooldown which is huge on re guys so keep make sure you get hunter genius you can go for sweet tooth but no just don't you know hunter genius is better um as your spell ignite i always run ignite on re because you know it's part of my burst combination of re with your ultimate and charming the enemy ignite is gonna allow you to deal even more damage so always run ignite on re okay that was it about the build let's get into the gameplay all right on to the gameplay so before really starting this video i want to talk about how to draft ari because i feel like this is a point where many people make a mistake so um how do you draft ari ari is good into assassins ari is good into melee champions in general ari is good into engaging champions so what does that mean a champion like evelyn ari counters evelyn a champion like garen you know when garen goes in you can easily hit your charm on him and that's what Evelyn is good against. So Evelyn is good against engaging champions. And take a look at the enemy comp. Diana, they have Garen, they have Vukum, and they have Alistar. These are four engaging champions. So this is utterly the perfect draft for Ari. Okay, so let's talk about the title of this video and everything you've been waiting for. What is this secret playstyle that you have to play Ari with for her to become truly S tier champion? So, as I said earlier, Ari is unlike any other champion. You have to play Ari like Ari, a completely unique champion. So, um, the way that you have to play Ari is you have to rotate. Yes, rotate, gank lanes, help your jungle. Like when you're playing Ari, listen carefully, when you're playing Ari, your jungler has to always win his jungle because you are going to help him. You have to help him. This is the power of Ari. Because you are incredibly strong in these early game fights. Incredibly strong. Like, you win against anyone. So, when you're playing Ari... Um, okay, look at my wave management here. Evelyn is going to fight in the top side here. What I have to do is I have to push. I have to push this lane and be ready to help the Evelyn. Like, as you can see, boom. Evelyn is there. I'm pushing this one minion and I'm rotating. This is a 2v2, so let's take a look at what's gonna happen. I see the Vukong over there, I flash charm him, I flash charm him, and look at this other play. Diana still has flash, I predicted the flash, I predicted that Diana would flash because I, I, oh, wait. This was just so well played, so let, let's take a look back at this. This is micro level gameplay, you know, this is also some b b uh, big brain plays. So, besides the fact of how to play Ari, I'm going to explain to you how you can make these flash out plays, okay? So, first of all, you can use your charm and then flash. So, take a look at what I'm going to do here. You know, I'm, I'm clicking on charm, boom, boom, and I immediately flash. So, take a look at this now. Diana is on me, and I'm walking there. Uh, and I thought by myself, Diana is probably going to use flash to kill me. So, what did I do? I timed it perfectly with her flash, and I immediately turned around. See, these are the little plays that you can make. These are the big brain plays. Try to think like your enemy when you're playing the game, right? Try to think, hmm, what are they going to do? Just like, remember the Darius video, guys, that I made the other day when I dodged the Malphite ultimate? Try to think, like, what is my enemy really going to do? What would I do if I was the enemy? So, you know, I thought if I was Diana, I would flash to Ari and kill Ari. So what did I do? I baited that I was walking there and immediately immediately went back and i timed it absolutely perfectly so you know if you want to ask me how i make this place you have to think like your enemy okay so now let's talk more about how to play ari um, as you can see you know i'm fighting all the time as an ari i'm never ignoring my team i keep fighting and fighting and fighting because this is the power of ari as you can see yet another kill 
this is the power of Ari, guys. Take a look at this. Look at how much damage I'm dealing. Like, I'm single-handedly hard carrying this fight. Yeah. Easily hard carrying this fight. <clears throat> so, wave management on Ari, you really want to have priority in your lane. And what does that mean? That means that you can rotate. You know, you can rotate without losing a lot of farm. And always rotate if you can. Because if you play Ari correctly, you are always going to win the fights early game. Keep, it, keep that in mind, early game. Ari is an early game champion, so you have to snowball early game. That is also why I run the champion room and why I run Ignite, because these combinations are going to make your damage so big. And, you know, if you play it right, you will win the early game. So another tip that I have for you on Ari is uh, I already talked about the flash combo. So your third ability. No, your ultimate, sorry, your ultimate. So your ultimate is obviously your main ability. It's the dashes, right? It allows you to dash back, dash in, everything. So about using your ultimate, you can easily combo with, with a charm. So the way that you do it is you use your ultimate to engage into the enemy, like get really close to them. Then, of course, it's going to be very easy to hit your charm because you're going to be close. Another way to use your ultimate, of course, is to run away, you know, you can always easily run away with your ultimate. You can, look at this, I use my ultimate to engage, I use my ultimate to dodge his ultimate, and I kill him. And look at this other play, oh my god, I'm on fire. I'm actually on fire. I'm gonna ask you guys, I'm gonna ask you guys this, let me know in the comments, okay? Let me know in the comments, I, just well, give me a second, I'm gonna ask you. So here, look. Why am I holding my flash? Like, I could have flashed away already. Why am I holding my flash? Let me know in the comments why you think I'm holding my flash here. So let's take a look. Let's take a look at this play. Why didn't I just flash away immediately? Because obviously I almost died. So let me know. Let me know. Very curious what you guys are going to say about it. <clears throat> so, um... Another thing that I have to say about Ari is micro gameplay is actually incredibly important on Ari. Outplaying your enemy, hitting your charms, knowing how to dash with your ultimate. Because as I said, you can dodge abilities with your dash. You can jump over walls, you can engage, you can disengage, you can do everything. So as an Ari, it's really important to actually really know how Ari works. And of course, um, knowing how she works comes with practice. You know, practice makes perfect. It's the most cliche thing I can say, but truly with Ari... Keep in mind what I said in this video, you know, you want to play aggressive, rotate to your teammates, and when you're going to play Ari for your first five games, you're going to suck, okay? You are going to suck. But, as I said, if you, you know, if you keep in mind what I said about how to play Ari, super aggressive, use the champion rune, electrocute, ignite, rotate all the time. If you keep doing this and practice Ari, you will get really good at her. Take a look at this. My Braum is actually playing beautifully here, and we killed him yet again. So keep that in mind. Ari is one of those champions that does take a little bit of practice, but it's very important to know how to play her. Like, I see so many Ari players, they just stay in lane and farm. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? You are super, like, you're a monster in the early game. You are a big, strong guy in the early game, and all you're doing is you're clapping some minions. What's going to happen after 10 minutes, you're not going to be big strong anymore. You're going to be an old guy. You know, you know you're going to be like an old lady that's not going to be able to do much. You want to utilize your big strong moment, right? Because right now the Diana is still like a small child. You know, she's not very strong. As you can see, I'm just completely bullying the Diana. I don't want the Diana to grow up and become strong and kill me. So what am I doing? Me as the big strong guy, I'm just clapping the, the, the Diana kid. And making sure I smash his head in the ground and not allowing Diana to become a big strong guy. I'm snowballing the game. And this is how you need to play with these early game champions like Ari. Snowball the game. Maintain your position as the big strong guy. Don't allow the enemy to become a big strong guy. You know, and you don't want to become like an old man. You know, if you don't do anything in the game, you're going to make the enemies become big strong guys. You're going to become like a, a silly old man. Of course, what's going to happen? The big strong guys are going to destroy the old man. So, yes. I am 8-0 right now. I am completely dominating the game. I have participated in 10 kills and the whole game only has 11 kills. So as you can see, we're winning this whole game because of me. Of course, here I flashed out of the Diana ultimate, but here we overextended. And we gave Diana two very, very bad kills. Me and the Wukong. 
she got a big ass shutdown she probably got like 1.5k shutdown gold which is really huge actually so here you know we're not doing too good here because they they might actually make a comeback now because i just fed the diana like uh, power food you know like power meat so the diana is becoming a stronger kid right now preparing to become like a big strong guy to destroy me right so i really need to pay attention to that i shouldn't that i really don't want to farm uh, don't want to feed diana anymore by the way you know keep in mind that i i have an instagram account you know as i said here it is you know make sure to follow it i will show some behind the scenes thing right there like maybe a kitchen tour maybe how i photoshop my thumbnails maybe how i edit my videos you know i will do some funny stuff there so if you not only like my wild Rift videos but also like me check out my instagram you know it's uh, just check it out i really love to see you guys there as well so take a look at what i'm doing here i'm looking for a gank like I was hovering around the bot lane, but I really thought like, nah, I can probably not gank it. It's a bit too risky because they have an Alistar. Like the Alistar can body block for the Ezreal and use his ultimate and then it's going to deem me useless. So instead, what I was doing is I just pushed the mid lane. And as you can see, they're actually winning the fight. So um, I'm pushing the mid lane. And the reason for that, again, lane priority. As an army, you want to have lane priority always. You never want to have the enemy wave pushed into you after level 2. Never. This is just terrible because then the enemies can rotate and you are pushed under your turret as an Ari. Like if you, as I said, if you get pushed under your turret as an Ari, you suck, okay? And that's not how you play Ari. So take a look at this, you know, I'm just hard focusing the Diana with my Ignite, Ultimate, Second Ability, Charm, everything. And here I actually overextended, so that was quite horrible. However, I did damage Vukong quite a lot, which should open my, you know, which should allow my team to do Dragon, but it really seems like, no, my teammates also died, wow, yeah, okay, yeah, I just completely overextended there and killed myself for no reason again, that was actually horrible, so as you can see, you know, I'm making, uh, like, pretty big mistakes on Ari. so I, I'm getting way too cocky in this game, and this is also a thing that you really shouldn't do, like, don't get too cocky in your games, because if you get too cocky, like, I was 8-0, now I'm 8-2. So, I died two times while I was completely snowballing the game, which is horrible. Of course, when you're 8-0, you don't have, like, you shouldn't die. You're so ahead that you should be able to completely destroy the enemy. Like, as I said, it's fine to play aggressive. Oh, I tried a flash charm combo, but he was very fast because he has a Yuma's ghost plate, unfortunately. So, um, it's okay to play aggressive. You know, it's okay to play aggressive, but keep in mind that you're mortal. You're just a mortal being. You, know, you can't die. And if you die, it's not worth it. It's not even worth killing an enemy if you die. Because look at this. I'm 8 0. I'm going to give the enemies a huge bounty if I die. So take a look at this, you know, this is again a good opportunity. We're, I'm collapsing on the enemy team, yet again, of course, rotating, not letting my team alone. And take a look at this, just completely destroying the enemy team. And this is what you do on Ari. I'm going to repeat it every time you rotate, all the time. And actually, I overextended yet again. I did a really good rotation, but here, as you can see, yet again, I did overextend. However, it is okay. Because my team picked up two kills in favor of it. So it was actually still fine. But here, like, you can really see, you can really, really see that Ari's playstyle is rotating in the early game. Snowball the game with Ari. Like, rotate top lane, rotate bot lane, rotate to your jungle, rotate here, there, this, that. Get lane priority. This is how you play Ari, guys. And this is how you can win games on Ari. I don't see many Aries in my ranked games because I really feel like people just don't know how to play Ari. And I hope that after this video, more people are going to be playing Ari because, like, you probably didn't know that Ari is a champion that has to play like this, really. And um, I hope that this is like an eye opener for you and really uh, makes you play Ari or at least try her out, right? Because she's incredibly fun to play if you, if you get good at her. Oh, I actually... I actually kind of failed her, but of course I'm dashing out of the ra uh, range of Diana, and I kill her. This is what Ari can do. Your ultimate allows you to dash around the enemy, and if you if you position it carefully, because your ultimate has like a little circle that deals damage, so you can um, how do I explain it? Like you can dash a bit to the left or the right of the enemy, but still keep them in the circle. So you're gonna damage them, but you're also gonna position yourself safely. Like as you saw, like, I'm gonna I'm actually. 
No, I'm not gonna. You can just rewind the video if you want. Check check how I fought Diana. You know, I positioned my ultimate in a certain way that Diana couldn't reach me with her ultimate, but I still reached her with my ultimate. And that's how you wanna use the ultimate of Ari. You know, you wanna damage the enemy while maintaining a safe position yourself. Okay, so here I was checking out what the enemies have built, you know, and I saw, you know, they have some, they have some, uh, magic resist and i don't really remember if i got a void staff or a green book like i didn't actually pay a lot of attention now to what the builds are but basically after you rabbit on pay check what the enemies have built if they have a lot of magic resist and they're very tanky build a void staff as your fourth item if the enemies uh, are not tanky you know just build the green book here you know he's just that as you can see boom very very easy the Infinity Orb is also a very powerful tool for Ari because once you get enemies low, you are gonna finish them off with the Infinity uh, Orb, yeah. And here you know, I don't really know what the Garen is trying to do. Like, I counter Garen. I deal true damage with my first ability. I can charm him, everything. Like, he's never gonna be able to kill me. Take a look at this. Like, what, what does he think that he's doing? Boom. He's dead. This is what Ari can do as well. He is a tank, but I have true damage, so I'll shred through any armor he may have, right? So as you can see, I am going for a Void Staff actually, and that the reason for that is because the Alistar has some magic resist, and, uh, and the Garen, the Garen especially, he has a lot of magic resist, so that's why I'm building a Void, um, a void Staff. I don't really know what the hell is going on in the chat of this game, but I don't think it's something good, because I feel like they're all trash talking each other, you know? Would be kind of funny if a Turkish viewer could tell me what the hell is going on in the chat. <laughs> uh, so here I got my Protobelt, right? And Protobelt is almost like your flesh, but you can't buffer abilities with a Protobelt, right? You can't actually use your charm and then Protobelt. With a Protobelt, you first have to use Protobelt and then your charm. Of course, it's going to be more delayed than an instant charm flash. But your protobelt has a lower cooldown, right? So you can use, still utilize your protobelt to get close to the enemy and just charm them very easily. Yeah, you know, he's just... Actually, he didn't die. Wow. Boom. Easy charm, you know. Garen really can't do much. He has to flash away. He really can't engage onto us. <clears throat> and as you can see, you know, the snowball on Ari has demolished this enemy. However, they can still come back. If they actually win one team fight, they can come back. They, and this is kind of a big problem on Ari. You know, when you know you can be snowballing, sure, but if you lose one team fight and the enemy has similar gold as you, they could make a comeback quite easily, actually, because in this scenario, uh, in this state of the game, if the if the enemy Diana has just as much gold as me, she is gonna win. Like she's actually gonna win because she does way more in team fights than me as an Ari. So let's take a look at what's happening here. You know, we just wanna uh, look at this. Oh my God! Use my Proto Belt, Flash, everything, and we're just absolutely demolishing the enemies right there, as you can see. So what we have to do here, you know, just win the game. Get Baron. And apply even more pressure on the enemies and continue snowballing like you want to keep on snowballing and snowballing and snowballing on Ari. like don't give your enemies any opportunity to make a comeback that's how you win on Ari. <clears throat> so that's my last item you know i'm getting a green book and you always really want to get a green book as your last item because uh, Ari's ultimate and Ari's second ability is going to be able to hit multiple en enemies at the same time, which is very powerful with the green book, right? Because you're going to reduce all of their healing. So let's take a look at what's happening here. You know, I'm, st I'm taking the fight with Wukong because, yeah, you know, it's easy. I'm super ahead. And he's the enemy jungler. So when you kill the enemy jungler, you can't just go for the Baron. And here I was trying to look for, uh, for more, but I didn't. And we should really go for Baron here. Like staying here would be a waste of time. This is yet another thing that I see a lot of players do, which actually really tilts me if it happens in my game. And that is wasting time. Some people really like to chase enemies while there is a Baron up and the enemy jungler is dead. Don't do that, guys. Don't be the stupid, annoying chaser of enemies because it's absolutely useless. It's useless to chase the enemies like that because you're just going to allow the Vukong to respawn and they can go back to their base, heal up and come back and fight you. Just get the Baron, guys. Just... Like, what we did here is perfect. Get the Baron and win the game. If we chase the enemies, we might have actually lost the fight and then, you know, lose the game. So keep that in mind also. 
And you know what I'm doing here, I'm making sure I'm split pushing his own. When you get Baron, it's very powerful to push at least two lanes, you know? Like, only pushing the mid lane, it can be okay, but pushing multiple lanes is obviously going to apply way more pressure on the enemies, because you're going to have way more Baron minions, you're going to get more turrets, going to spawn inhibitor minions, and as you can see, GG easy. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wonder if this video is going to reach 1000 likes in the first day, you know? Going to make me do the Z gameplay then. So, let's take a look at what, what rating I actually got. S tier, of course. <laughs> of course. And let's take a look at, the, at everything else. It's funny because the Braum actually added me right after this game. As you can see, I did so much damage. So, thank you guys very much for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I will see you all in the next Wild Drift video. Bye-bye.